Hi, this is Adam Elio Berkowitz from Israel 365 News. I'm doing something special, mostly for myself and hopefully also for my readers and my viewers. I'm here with Adam Rabinowitz. Um, Adam is a young filmmaker originally from South Africa who made a film that I think it was really expresses what Israel is. And there were some experiences that came after the making of the film that I thought are very important for the world today. So I'd like Adam to tell us who he is and what this amazing project was. So Adam, go for it. Hey, how are you doing? Um, so as you said, I'm Adam Lovett. I'm one of the directors of a film called 30KMH, an Israeli adventure film. We have Israel in the title. And uh, my co-director, well, he's not here with me, but he, we directed this film, it's a documentary about a guy who is about to turn 30, and he finds a note that he wrote 10 years prior, and in it, uh, a list of dreams that he had for himself, where he sees himself at the age of 30. Um, slightly after writing that note, he joined the army and he stayed there for 10 years, and he realizes he didn't fulfill any of them. One of the things on the list was his dream to drive through Israel on an electric toy car. One of his childhood dreams. And that one ridiculous dream he actually decides to fulfill. And he goes on this uh, road trip, this Israeli road trip from Nafula, which is in the north of the country, to Eilat, the south, uh, on an electric toy car. And during, during his uh, trip, you don't just do a trip to do a trip, you do a trip to experience uh, life and to experience life. And during his trip, he uh, meets the many different people living in Israel, including friends, family, but also total strangers who help him understand what it actually means to grow up, and especially to grow up in a country like Israel, where things are sometimes a little bit more complicated for someone in his, uh, uh, in his young adulthood. Uh, in his young period of adulthood, and he does this all in a very small car. Um, so that's a film we directed a couple of years ago, and it took us a few years to edit, and we finally released it into the world. And now due to COVID, we had a bunch of screenings. We also had screenings overseas. We had screenings in Israel, and COVID kind of killed all the, the rest of the fan mm. screenings. So we decided to release the film online, which is also great because it allows anyone to watch it, basically. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the uh, link in so that people can, can see the trailer and also if they wanted to see the whole film. There are a couple things that I want to tell you that I loved about this film, okay? <laughs> One is um, anytime someone says, I had dreams and I wanted to fulfill them, I mean, gosh, it doesn't get better than that. That's really what it's about. And the thing about your dream, it's so silly. But at the same time, when it comes to your dreams, you don't have to explain it to someone. Your dreams are yours. They're, they're really, I think they're from, from, from Hashem, from God. And it's a very deep thing. It's very personal. So someone can say, oh, that's silly to go across Israel in, a, in an, an electric toy. But, you know, it's, it's really, if it's your dream and no one, no one else is there to do it, then, then go for it. I also want to say, I, when I was much younger, um, I was, I had much younger friends. I was 35 and they were all in their early twenties and they wanted to go from the North of Israel to the South of Israel um, by bicycle. Um, it's a little over 400 kilometers. What's that in, in miles? Less than 200 miles in, in American terms. A lot of people commute that every day. You know, yeah. it's really, it's really not a big distance. Um, but when you're on a bicycle, or when you're not in a car, you really experience the journey in an entirely different way. It's much more visceral, much more personal. I mean, I remember there were stretches of the road that I'll be driving with people and they'll be like, ah, this isn't a hill. And I'm like, oh, it's a hill. <laughs> I nearly <laughs> died on this hill. <laughs> you know, um, There's a cemetery yeah. just out of Beit Shan and it's a really steep hill. <laughs> and I just stopped there and I'm like, they're gonna bury me here. This is it. <laughs> it was just, you just experience it in a very different way. And, and, and I don't think anyone else has experienced Israel um, in the manner that someone who did it in on an electric cart experienced it at how much was it 30 kilometers an hour 
30 kilometers at the peak going downhill <laughs> um, <laughs> because we were dealing with the 30 year old crisis that our generation we suffer from, I think we suffer crises a little bit like existential crises more often so when you turn 30 you have this some sort of existential crisis which I think we also get when we turn 50 and we also get when we turn 60 and so forth and so forth um, so but the the maximum speed was 30 kmh, so it went well with our name. But most of the most of the ways, you go 10, 12 k's, and um, it lets you experience the country a little yeah. bit differently. Because yeah, as you said, yeah, I mean, so many people they're 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 into fast. Everything has got to be fast, and when you force yourself to slow down. It, it really, it, it, it changes the way you experience it and it changes you, I think. It's, it, that's why when I saw this, I'm like, brilliant. It was just brilliant. I loved it. I loved it. Um, so, so, so tell me it's like one of the experiences that really went deep. Um, okay, so basically in the film, Safril, he, he's doing, he's the character, he's the guy who does the trip. He's a dear friend of ours. Um, I think, I think one of the one of the stronger points of the film, it's a little bit of spoilers, where you actually get stuck. Um, you got stuck a couple of times in in the in the in the film in the trip, but because it's a movie and it's we want to make it an enjoyable experience, we can't show everything. So you choose what we sh show, and that moment when you get stuck and you have to figure out whether you're going to continue and you're going to follow your dream, Whoa. or you're actually going to. I don't know if it's to give up or you're just going to say. So how did, what, how did he get stuck? He ran out of electricity? Um, basically, yes. He did a very stupid thing. Uh, and it, I think it happens when you get a little bit, um, not, I don't want to say cocky, when you get a little bit. Um, too sure of yourself? Too sure of yourself. And it was basically two days before the end. And so we did, it, took, it took us about 21 days, including Shabbat. Uh, 21 um, days? Oh my Something gosh. like that. It, it could, but we didn't <laughs> film on Shabbat. He doesn't drive on Shabbat. So it took 21 days and <laughs> stayed like an extra day in Jerusalem to uh, spend time with his girlfriend. Uh, but yeah, uh, two days before the end, he we in the desert and we he left enough battery to get to the next destination the next day, but we wanted to do a proper night in the desert. And that's when he decided to leave the dimmer on. It's normally, it's just like you barely can see it, uh, but we need that light for a bit. And then he forgot and the next morning we wake up, no electricity. And that's the moment where you have to realize, okay, or we're gonna just give up and, uh, or wait another day, or you're gonna do the more sane thing and walk 12 kilometers with a, with a toy car by your side in the middle of the desert. Uh, and that's where he actually really, I think that was like one, a point where he said, I'm doing this, I owe it to my, he, I don't think he even, he didn't owe it to himself, he owed it to his young self. And, and that's, really? that's, that's some sort of realization that, that he had, which was pretty nice, like a, an experience that was very strong. Um, I think also he, he got that understanding that it's, not exactly his dream, but his younger self dream, dream which he's fulfilling, which is also sometimes important that our dreams, our dreams definitely do change. Um, so that was like a, that was a moment that was held, held dearly to us, and just meeting the very different people we met on the way. Um, like yeah, who, who did I, you meet? You, you, I'm sure you met <laughs> Jews and Arabs. We we actually met. I'm, I'm happy to say we met so many different people, um, from young people to adults, from uh, the Brestov in in Yavniel where we stayed a night, uh, and he also a guy with a lot of knowledge and a very interesting guy uh, who shared his thoughts and input to. Uh, Palestinian Palestinian worker who would love to join Safriel, but he hasn't got a, a, a but he is not allowed to enter a lot. And you get these very different perspectives of many different people, and that's the beauty of it. You just understand that everyone are just people. Most most of the people just want to live their life and they they want to make the best out of it. And that was a very nice thing when you 
travel and you stop and you talk to people on the day-to-day -day basis, we don't really get to talk to. Uh, you look at them, they're a little bit different. So, and your day, your day continues because how, how often do we talk to strangers? There we had moments to stop and have coffee, sleep at people's houses, yeah. um, really get a glimpse of these people's lives and understand that we, everyone wants to be happy, you know, uh, not everyone, 99.999% of the people just want to be happy and live their life. I, li I like that. that you're, you're focusing on the, on the bright spots. I mean, I remember, you know, I remember when I, when I was traveling also, it amazed me, like, I would, we showed up at, a, a, at um, Gilgal, which is a kibbutz in the, in the Beit yeah. Valley. And we just, we showed up and it was getting dark. And someone at the front gate said, you want to see, sleep in our, in, our, in our lawn, sleep on our yawn. Here, I'll let you lose my, use my showers, which when you're traveling, a shower is, you know, it's the best thing you can do for someone is to let them shower. And, 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 and I remember even when it comes to giving someone water in the desert, that's biblical. You know, that's biblical to give someone water in the desert. And everyone, not everyone did that, but, so, but most people were very, were very generous and they understood that giving water in the desert is giving life. And they were very into that. So I, yeah. it's definitely, it does exist in Israel. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's one of the beauties. I think, I think that's why it's so important to travel, not just to see places. I think just to meet the people on the way. That's like, uh, at the end of the day, those are the memories we take back. And that's the brilliant. The important part of our life, the people we meet, the important part of the journey, and also I think the important part of our film is the people. Uh, the landscape is beautiful, and uh, the country is amazing. You get to see desert and green and everything, but I think what's what's important in general is, is that's the that's usually important because usually travel films they focus on the on the on the photo ops, the 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 images, which an image is just you know pixels on the screen. But the, the experience, I mean, and I know that as, as an Israeli, when, when I open my door to, to, to travelers who come to Israel, um, it lets me see Israel through their eyes. And it's, it, that's also like me rediscovering something I love. So that's, you're absolutely right that, that connecting with the people is really what travel is about. That's really yeah. nice. So... And you, it's, and I like that you're not like, well, yeah, there were Arabs and there were Jews and there were eh, whoever, you know. Um, Everyone's very unique. I think every person we met kind of had had the had something unique about them. Um, so did, like, did you get anyone saying you were crazy? Uh, his mother and his grandparents, <laughs> basically. Uh -oh. um, the, the, the parents and the, the grandparents. I think people who are very emotionally attached and um, care about the person's future, the other people that say, you're crazy, how can you do that? such a thing? You know, life should progress. You have to go study and, and whatnot. But people who don't have this, um, don't have this attachment and don't, aren't too worried about Safril's future, they're, they're like... They're, they're amazed. They were all like excited for him because he's going and doing something that most people want to do, which is fulfill their dreams. We just have to, we put it on hold normally so we can live our life basically. So I think most people, even if they thought he was crazy, but good crazy, um, except for his uh, relatives who just say, you should be working and uh, studying and getting married and having children. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm 59 years old. And you said something that really touched me. It's, it's not only my dreams, because I have my dreams from when I'm 59. But to, to relate to a younger me and what he needed and his dream, I think that's, that's also at least as powerful an experience, even if it doesn't make sense, because it doesn't make sense to me now, but, but, yeah. and also in Israel, I don't know, there's, there's a very unique um, pre-army life and after army life. It's the, everything in your life is separated into those two things. Did you do the army in Israel? I did, yeah, I did the army. I was in the tank, yeah, I was in the tank unit. Um, uh, yeah. what, what, how old were you when you came to Israel? Um, I was seven, so I was pretty young. I was pretty young. You, your parents, uh, was, uh, they got you one uh, of those little uh, electric carts? 
<laughs> no, it was uh, it was also my dream. We 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 shared that dream, but I I have a I I, I sadly know how to take film something and um and hold the camera and be behind, and he knows how to be in front. So he had to go and fulfill fulfill both of our dreams, but kind of fulfilled it through the fruit. We actually did it. Um, so sometimes you pick your friends because they're the same kind of crazy. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think he's just one level above. I would have. <laughs> I would have probably been too scared to get from Matula to Kiryat Shmona because that road is, I don't know if you've driven that road lately, but it's, it's crazy. Uh, I've driven it, not so, yeah, you know which stretch of the road really, really scared me when I was on the bicycle? Um, well, all of them, but, um, <laughs> but that one stretch of road from, um, from, well, the Yama Melech was very, the Dead Sea was very hard, but from the Dead yeah. Sea to Eilat is just a long stretch of empty road. And it's, it's just, it's, you feel like, I mean, it's the beginning of Africa and it's very, <laughs> and then I, I crawl, I literally crawled into the, into the sea in Eilat. It was just, I mean, Israel's a small country, but it's really takes it out of you. It's you, you, you feel that you've, you've experienced it. It's not, it's not something you can be uh, kind of about it's, 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 it's not ambivalent. It's a very real experience. Wow. Um, another thing that I want to talk about, um, I, I want to emphasize before, before we move on, um, I haven't yet seen your film, but I absolutely am going to. Um, because I really that when I said that I liked those things about it, uh, I, I really meant it. And I don't usually do videos like this. I usually do politics. I usually this is just I was so intrigued by it that I said I've got to see it. And another thing you did that was really powerful to me, and we've talked about it, and it's I think it's hugely important, is you posted your was it your trailer that got the responses? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, the trailer got the responses and an event we organized, basically. Right. So you would think that something as sweet and, you know, there I can't think of anything that could be less political than riding around on a little toy electric cart. And yeah. you, you got responses to it that were pretty horrifying. Um, and your response to those responses, I thought was brilliant. I thought was really brilliant. So, so tell me a little bit about that. Um, so, so yeah, so basically we, due to COVID, we decided to arrange online screenings and, and how, how, do, how, how do, does someone get the word out now with, if not with Facebook ads? So we use them and we're not big into Facebook ads. So we probably also, uh, didn't have the target that we didn't target the right audience. So some of the audience was very supportive, but also we got to people who I think at this point were BDS and very anti-Israel. And the, a lot of the comments were very hateful comments and um, just things you don't, you don't kind of see on your day to day living in Israel and having this kind of safety net where you live. You know they happen, you know they happen, but I, I want to no, point out. I want to point out that Adam is being very sweet, um, characteristically sweet here. Um, I, I watched him. They 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 read out the responses, um, and they read them out in not a, not even in an angry way, but I mean I've um, I've never heard people say to me those that level of anti-Semitism. Not even anti. It was just hatred of another person, and because you were Israeli, they had something to to grab onto. So they, so they, yeah. they and it was really, I mean, just like curses that I haven't heard in years. Yeah. So, so what kind of happened is we we did a video uh, with the first one. It was we did two videos. So the first one we got responses to um, to our first uh, video and were anti-Israel, which I I've heard the ideas and 
Um, it doesn't make me happy. It, it's upsetting that people see it that way. Traveling, you also experience some of those things, but you, you always, okay, so when you talk to someone and they speak to you anti-Israel, you realize it's not going to be a friendship, friendship built over here. I don't try to get, I try not to get into conflicts uh, in general in life, but especially like that, because I know no one's going to be convincing anyone, except that we both humans, that's a maximum. And it's happened before, I've ended up hugging someone who came at me angrily, because uh, when you talk, sometimes if you maintain a certain level, mm -hmm. people are, uh, people can actually talk and realize there's a person in front of you and just not a stick, and not only a stigma of what an Israeli is to them, um, so basically, we read those comments, which were, were like uh, boycott Israel and stuff like that. And we shared that, we got its response. And then we have found that this video was uploaded to a site called BitChute. I don't know if you've heard of it, mm. uh, but basically, it's an uncensored platform. And over there, the, it went from anti Israel to complete anti Semitism, which right. I have. I have an experience and um, I was actually shocked that some of it still, I know people hate, some people hate Jews, but I was kind of shocked that some of the theories of Jews drinking blood. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so many different uh, anti-Semitic um, propaganda, which I thought hasn't been in existence for many, many years. Uh, and that's that, that's where we got that. So it was actually like comments to the comment video, the first comment video that we made. And it's upsetting to see people people like that still exist, but to react in anger is basically giving them what they want. My assumption is the people also respond respond like that. They have the safety of the internet, and they also have never met or never truly interacted or get, haven't had the option to interact with another with the Jew, basically. So we decided to do the one thing we can do is make some sort of video, reading it out, because I also think it's important that people know that these opinions still exist. Because uh, we, me and Roy and I were also both rather surprised by, by that. Um, so that's number one, but also to make kind of a light in the situation, hoping that these people actually see it. And I hope it will make it, hope them think a little bit uh, about what they said. Also, know this uh, real. I, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of good possibilities that can come out of your approach. Yes, um, that maybe the people will see their own words and reconsider would hopefully be one. Or someone who believes the a similar thing would see that. Oh gosh, maybe it's not such a good thing to say that Jews kill Christian children and drink their blood because here's a very nice man who did a very sweet thing by just riding around on this electric thing. And maybe I don't want to say that about him. Um, I think it also, I think what you also did was you rubbed away at the surface and it was funny that you went from BDS to these horrible things because I think that a lot of times um, we're in a situation where the, the, the anti-Israel is really coming from a very deep and bad place of hatred and hatred isn't isn't a good thing you know i i've had to yeah so to respond to it like this it's like once someone punches you you have to punch back but if you if you open the door and say hey can we have a beer and talk about it <laughs> that's, I think, that's the only way we solve these uh, uh, situations. I also, we also try to make uh, we we try to make the best out of the situation because we could have got angry. Um, and they, whoever says that when you get angry, you also normally you tend to show the worst side of yourself. When you get angry, you don't tend to be someone. Oh, this is actually a very nice person in front of me. Maybe my thoughts about him and the people like him are uh, wrong. No, when you get angry, you tend to have this, um, the worst side come out basically. And then and then if someone has a bad thought about you and you, you react in anger, then obviously they're gonna, that those bad thoughts will continue. And if not, uh, if, not get, if not get worse. Uh, what we did do, obviously we also said, okay, this is also a decent way to also uh, 
get the word of the film out and we decided also to make a positive something positive out of it mm -hmm. and it, and whoever watches the film also we're going to donate to like an Israeli cause so basically so those people who um, are kind of like being very anti are somehow hoping <laughs> to do something <laughs> uh, something a little positive like uh, we're going to donate something in their name to an Israeli cause so that beautiful was, beautiful uh, that we, <laughs> and, and I really hope I can, I'll, I'll be able to um, <laughs> share this video with those commenters. I don't know if they'll see it, and I don't know if it'll make them either see the humor in it or get a little, I don't know if, if they get upset. I won't be upset if they get upset, I'll be honest, but I'll also be, I'll, if they see the humor in it and see that. It's brilliant of all these people who were saying those horrendous horrible horrifying things about jews if they're yeah. actually helping some jewish charity through their horrible thoughts yeah. my gosh that's that's amazing that's, that's, so adam that's, 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 i i i, I want to leave our listeners well, wanting to know more about you and if we get a huge response we'll do this again i love talking to you yeah me too. <laughs> um what are you working on now um, so basically now we, I'm working on another film. Um, I'm working on two things. So I'm working on another film with my partner um, where basically it's, it's a different kind of journey. It's a more personal journey about my mother who was born in Congo um, and in Africa. She's a daughter to a Holocaust survivor and from Rhodes and the Rhodes community, a lot of them found themselves in Congo um so it's a story about the community and a lot of the complications of the second generation second generation uh, to the holocaust uh, holocaust survivors she was also orphaned and abandoned in the in, in a convent in congo um it's a little complicated story that I, that, that has a lot of detail like a recently discovered brother and we're trying to tell that story of like the second generation through the story, the personal story of my mother. And, and her, that's her that's family. something a lot of people don't realize is the Holocaust. Um, it's like throwing a huge stone into the middle of a lake. Um, just because the stone fell below the surface doesn't mean that the story is over. Um, the Holocaust is still the, 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 the its effect on people is is still very clear i have friends who are holocaust survivors and you can tell that it's that it's a, a sons of holocaust survivors and it's affected their lives um it's affected it's, it's definitely it's definitely affects the second generation it, absolutely. it affects the third it affects the third generation sure. we all you know at the end of the day everyone's affected by their parents when a when a parent went through something so awful uh, it has an effect on the child um and yeah so my mother's story is a little complicated and she has a brother that she recently discovered um i have i have i have two friends that that happened to as a result of the holocaust two who discovered late much later in life that they had siblings right. um so it's definitely something that 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 the holocaust did to the jewish people is just yeah. just destroyed the families in ways that yeah. you you can't imagine mentally sure. as well as um yeah physically um yeah. already separated everyone so we're working on that film that's also a very long progress uh, process we we're supposed to travel to congo last year uh to film uh but i don't know this year sorry not last year this year but uh, as you know traveling isn't much of an option nowadays. So hopefully we're gonna continue. Well, that's another th big draw of your film, I think. Um, a big attraction of your film is that um, I know so many people who want to come to Israel, love to come to Israel, even people who've been here many times before, it's just like, you need your, your Israel fix. You need to come back. And, um, I, and you can't. So a lot of people are doing virtual, virtual tours. They're doing video tours. And in the world of video tours, your film is very unique. I, I am pretty sure there are no other See Israel on an electric uh, toy movie. Definitely, definitely the only one. We actually are, I think, one of the only road trip Israeli, <laughs> true road trip Israeli films, because it's very hard to be done. 
it's if you don't have a very a very um, slow machine, you can't you can't travel the country. Uh, so so yeah, so basically so. So we have that. We were still working on the film, the, the previous film, 30 kmh. Uh, we also, obviously, you always try and uh, get the word out. So that's something we can see work on. And we work on Mama Africa. And we also try to do small, uh, short videos. Oh, so your next, your next movie is called Mama Africa. Yeah, that's that's a story of my mother. It's, uh, Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. And, and, and we're working on these uh, short videos. So you didn't time. quite make it up to 40 years in the desert. But <laughs> no, not forty years, thank you. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but but twenty-one days is definitely it. Okay, so I, I think I'm gonna let let my readers want a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna be putting the links to the movie at the bottom of the video. And uh, this was Adam Rabinowitz. And uh, thanks. It's been I, I I really I was just this I do for myself. I just wanted to talk to you, and hopefully get the word out of something really nice. I want to thank you very much. I enjoy talking, really talking to you. And I hope whoever watches the film uh, enjoys and I promise you some of the money is going to go to a good cause. That I can guarantee. The anger uh, of the haters also of Israel. a good cause. Independent <laughs> Israeli creators are also a good cause, but, but even a better cause. Um, Absolutely. Okay, so hold on just one minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off and then, uh, and then uh, um, people will be able to see the, see the video, the links uh, on the, on the, uh, under the video.